have questions for you ladies. Were you doing meditation at least once a day for five minutes or twice a day for 10 minutes? What challenges did you come up with? What's working or what's not working? Because today I'm gonna be adding more and more details. So who wants to share? Uh, the morning ones are easier for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. the night ones are hard. So I started playing like a little bit of um, like prayer music. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that helped. Yeah. But it, just a lot of mental chatter. Yeah. yeah. When we meditate or when we do mantras in the morning, we set up our day, but as soon as we go to work, as soon as we even have a conversation with a girlfriend or colleague or bo boss, we take on their energy. And so when we do meditation, our vibrations, our energy goes higher. But with one conversation, it can go drop this much. But if we're taking in consideration, working with clients, being on the computer, talking to people, we are constantly dealing with people who are stressed they're dealing with their breakdowns in life. And so slowly by sure, eight hours takes our energy back. So by the way, what I would recommend for you, when you drive home after work or when you finish work, um, we can do it actually. After each conversation, as you see your energy starts to drop, you can just remember how the mantra Baba Nam Kevalam made you feel happiness or love or joy. You can close your eyes after each conversation that brought your energy down and you can just in tune to Baba Nam Kevalam and your vibration will, will go up. It's a cheat sheet throughout the day. But typically I also recommend as you drive home after work, you can put a meditation music so your energy gonna start coming down and ideally you want to at least come for five minutes after work to your room to your space and just do five minute meditation if you can if you can't it's okay but just try to again at least once in a while say baba nam ke balam to get in tune back to the energy that you experienced in the morning now today I'm gonna be teaching you how to do kirtan. Most likely, I hope we're gonna have enough time for my uh, Lalita Mamrika dance, which will help you in the evening before the meditation to get back to that space of clarity and happiness so you can be present while you're meditating. Because otherwise, yes, our mind in the evening is very busy and it's hard to be in tune and doing the meditation. But today, let me just go over briefly about the breath work because some of you still might be struggling with it. And that's why I want in more details. Because normally, how we breathe in life is we're not using full length of our chest because it's exhausting. Because try to take a deep breath with your full chest. Do it two more times with chest. One more time. Can you see how exhausting it is? It takes a lot of energy, a lot of power, right? And typically that's why people use only this area to breathe. Try to now breathe with this area. That's how we're normally breathing. Not full chest, but right here. Now, do you see how much you're lacking the oxygen? You're not getting enough. It's shallow. And by the way, this is how we feel throughout the day. We're not getting enough oxygen. We are tired and our breath is for us to, our, when we're breathing correctly, it helps us to clear our mind because yogis explain that from our tip of our head to sacrum, it has like a central system. And when we're not breathing correctly, it's not flowing. And if it's not flowing correctly, our chakras get, and Eileen knows that better, it gets suppressed. 
and we feel exhausted, we get tired, and that's why sometimes when we even wake up, we already feel tired because of just breath. And so, mm, breathing, it's so important for us to breathe actually in meditation through stomach. But again, it will take a while for you to learn that. That's why in the beginning of each meditation, we gotta take a full air of stomach, then lungs, then this area, and try to reach the top, and then exhale also with the stomach. Because when again, we do the full breath, our chakras starts to open up from again, from here to there, all the way to the tip of our head. And that's very critical. And so again, I would like for us to just do at least five breaths correctly. Stomach first, full air, lung second, and then this area. And when we breathe out, we breathe out fully through our belly. Belly first, lungs, and this area. Uh, the third is this area. But again, if it's very difficult, it's okay to breathe out with your chest because that will come with practice. But we gotta fully breathe out and we gotta take full breath in order to expand our mind and our body, okay? So let's close our eyes and do the breathing correctly. Concentrate on your belly. You take the air from your stomach, okay? And then lungs and the top of your shoulders area. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Last one, breathing in, breathing out. Let's do one more time and try to reach with your air all the way to the tip of your head. One more time. Breathing out. Now we cannot breathe like that when we meditate. Otherwise we're doing the meditation for breathing. But once you're gonna become comfortable to it and you stop concentrating that you gotta breathe correctly, that's the way to breathe correctly in the meditation. But right now do it 10 times before you start meditation to get practice in to get practice in. And then it's gonna become natural as you breathe through your stomach and it's gonna become lighter and lighter. A again, uh, when you meditate, you breathe through the stomach, but it's not gonna feel like this expansion. But the goal is to start practicing to breathing through the stomach. All right, ladies, now let's talk about kirtan. Why do we need kirtan? Kirtan is the, kirtan sets you up in the right mood for meditation because um, sometimes we go to sleep and we have bad dreams we have sometimes nightmares and when we wake up we're still thinking about stress at work stress in the relationship or money or bills the daily activity and then when we do a meditation we're taking all of the stresses from the dream or from our daily life into meditation and it could take us 20 minutes to calm our brain and to fully concentrate on meditation and what kirtan does when you are singing you are singing and all of a sudden you start to feel i am singing to god himself to our creator and when we sing in the beginning we put our hands like that in every culture, in every religion, when we put our hands like that, who wants to guess what is this gesture means? Thank you, it's acknowledgement. You're thanking, you're acknowledging creator. And at some point as you're singing and when you sing your eyes is closed, you can even start raising your arms. Now, it's been proven when you raise your arms like this, you're starting to feel happiness, you're open, you're confident. I will tell you even more. In Harvard University, 
in 1990s, one professor decided to study yogis. And he took a students, 100 students, and he said, we're gonna uh, do the interview for a job. But before you're gonna do the interview for a job, 50 students gonna be singing Kirtan with, eyes, with arms closed like this for 15 minutes. And other students will be singing Kirtan with arms like that. And what the study showed, the students who were singing with arms like that, 50 students, got hired to a job. And students who were closed off and singing kirtan like that did not get a job. So it just gives you an idea. Because when we even go to football or soccer or golf and somebody's winning, we're like, yay, joy, happiness, success, right? And so when you do this arms like that, you feel like you fully surrender, you're happy, you're taking all, all of the confidence, happiness, and joy from God himself, our creator. And so uh, at some point when we're going to be dancing next time, or maybe even today, you're going to do that. But even during the kirtan, if you feel like your arms want to do this, you want to do that, and you can bring it back. If you want to open up, you open up. And if you want to bring it down, you can do that. Because again, kirtan is setting us up to do the meditation in the right mood. Because the mood is everything. That's why I've been telling people, when you come to this class, you are coming not to me, not to somebody. You're coming to a meeting with Creator. And that's why you want to come and you want to serve. You want to come and you want to give. And that's why when you are meditating on a daily basis, you're coming to give. And when a person is not meditating, at all, and they're coming to the meetings, they're actually doing what? Taking. They're taking. And also studies proved that when we're singing, even if some people don't like to sing, and they're like, oh, why do I need the kirtan? They're still gonna get a benefit. The people who don't like other people who are singing, also gonna get the benefit. <laughs> and people who are singing, they're getting the most. Yeah, and so we gotta come to the singing part, accepting it's like, okay, I am in a meeting with God. And now we're going to go over the Baba Nam Kebalam. Baba is Father from Sanskrit. It's God. It's a creator. However you feel comfortable. It's form. Form. Form is me, a form. A chair is the form. The house is the form. The grass, the tree. It's a object or it's a subject it's it's a form valam is everything everything and anything and so full translation is god is everything god is everyone now form form ke valam is everything excellent question and so every time we say ba we are opening the door to the world of god to some, it's a universe. To some, it's... Um, do you remember when we were kids and we were decorating the Christmas tree, getting ready for New Year or some holiday that you grew up with? There was the feeling of like a little magic, right? There's the space. When we're adults, we just take it like, oh, going to, uh, let's say, Jamaica, not a big deal. Ocean is turquoise, beautiful, this fish, not a big deal. We take everything for granted. It's like, oh, not a big deal. But when we were kids, we were experiencing that magic, a little bit of mysticism, right? And so, when we do ba, ba, is the first ba, we're opening the door into the world of God or universe, however, creator, higher power, higher power, however makes you feel uh, comfortable. Lam, we're closing that door, and with the next ba, we're opening another door, a deeper door. Make sense? So it's with each sentence, we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into his world. We're opening and we're entering the space, the spiritual space. Okay? Any questions so far? No? So that's the effort we want to do as we're entering the space and connecting to the feeling of happiness, joy, and love. Happiness, joy, and love as we're entering the world, the mystic world. For us, it's unknown. 
right? But we are inviting. We're inviting and entering that world. We're gonna do 10 minutes singing. And then we're gonna start doing the meditation because we're gonna be in a different set of mind for doing the meditation. And with the meditation, we're gonna do uh, first out loud, Baba Nam Kevalan for some time together. And then we're gonna be in silence. And in silence, you wanna be in a space somewhere open field, or maybe you're in front of the ocean, or maybe you're on top of the mountain, you're sitting or you're standing, however it's comfortable, you're connecting to the space of joy and happiness or love, and you then will be saying it to yourself, Baba Nam Keva Lam.
you want to raise your hands.
cloud, we can do it together. Baba Nam Kim. Baba Nam Kim. Baba Nam Kim. Baba Nam Kim. Position for those who remember. Your eyes is closed, your tongue is on the top of your mouth, and you just say to yourself, Baba Nam Kevala, and you connect to the feeling of love, happiness, or peace. You can start now.
and slowly exhaling. Another deep breath and you can stretch your arms. Very good friends. All right, ladies, who wants to share? How did it go for you? <laughs> but loud so everybody can hear. <laughs> I'll move the computer towards you or you can come here. Eileen, you want to share or Carolyn? No, you want to go first? Yes, I need a minute. You, uh, you need a minute, okay, Carolyn? Um, I was telling Eileen that uh, I saw a lot of uh, like blue and purple and yellow. And she was saying that that kind of connects to your solar plexus because before I would just see a lot of blues but like connecting more to my like identity and my personal story and it kind of tracks because last week I almost felt like high when we left here like very energetic but then it was very clear that stuff that I was holding on to was coming to the surface and I did a pretty good job of not like attaching to it but there was like a bit of a like a shedding mm -hmm. a release yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the singing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I need that song. <laughs> I do. You can choose any song, Babana, Kebala. Okay. Yeah, but I'll share the song with you. Yeah. So for me, I oh, I got emotional this time. I was crying. It just was a beautiful connection. It was just like straight connection to God for me this time. And uh, peace was what I focused on, but it turned into gratitude. Um, and I hadn't had that. I'd specifically been focusing on either love, peace, or happiness. But today, gratitude really came about. So, and just thinking about everything that uh, I'm grateful for, I started to tear up. So, mm -hmm. it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I forgot to share, what singing does to us. It opens us, opens up this chakra. And so what it does, when this chakra opens up, your voice starts to become prettier and it's this voice also connects us to get closer and more start to have more intimate connection with people not just men but women we become closer intimately like deeper friendships deeper connections I mean like really deeper relationships but also the voice uh, when you, your voice becomes prettier it connects also to our charisma Mm -hmm. So the more we're singing, the more we're actually connecting to our own charisma within ourselves. So that's why this chakra is very important. So again, for those of you who are online and you're not familiar with yogi, you, you have your own faith. You can just sing before you pray or before you do meditation in your religion. But I'm showing how yogi doing it. Because again, uh, Kirtan, in, um, Yogi been singing Kirtan actually 7,000 years ago. So you just can connect how old it is. I wanted to add a little bit today about Lalita Mamrika dance that we didn't do today, but we're gonna do it next time. But I have a question. When you were doing Kirtan, did you remember at some point to start putting your arms like this and like this? You did? How did that feel? Uh, I was crying sometimes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, because this is where you're really, the gratitude shows up, the happiness, right? Surrendering is like, I'm one with God, right? And that's typically what tears up people and they start to feel real deep joy. Even if sometimes you don't feel like you want to do it, and if you do it anyway, you start to connect this, to this feeling. And that's why it's important. Now, in Lalita Mamrika, here in Kirtan, some people don't even do these movements. They can just stay in mantra position like this. Remember our, we do either lotus. Did I went over the lotus, half a lotus and Turkish position, right? And your arms could be like this in different finger, different finger from the lecture. You should remember what it means. For those who don't, I can send that to you. But in Lalita Mamrika, when we dance, what we do with each beat, for example, Baba Nam Ke Valam. So now I would like for 
Eileen to uh, film me. Mm, so people on TikTok can see me well how it's done, and if you, Carolyn, can hold it like that, so the girls. Is it okay if I flip it so I can see? You? Uh, see if it happens. Very good. So when we're doing kirtan, a little bit lower. Let me show you. So next time we're gonna be doing uh, Lalita Mandrika. We are tapping. Ba ba, ba ba nam, ke valam. Ba, ba, nam, ke, ba, lam. So, this uh, toe, which is the big toe right here, is connecting to the tip of our head. And so every time we're tapping, we are connecting to the cosmos, to the universe, to God. And that's why when we're dancing, right, ba, ba, nam, with each tap we're connecting to this chakra and this chakra again is connecting us to higher power to God and so next time we're gonna do Lalita Mamrika and we're gonna be doing the dance we typically step, start the dance with this position acknowledgement of God and higher power and at some point when you feel you're starting to open up your arms okay so this is going to be, but I will be sharing in more details this dance. Lalita from Sanskrit means beauty, beautiful, and Mamrika means going deeper, going deeper. And how you're going deeper is with each tap, we're saying Baba, Nam, Ke, Vala. We're opening the door. We're opening the door. We're dancing for uh, God himself. Mm. We're entering his kingdom. Okay? Thank you, ladies.